Hi, in this video we'll see how coroutines work. Coroutines are used when you have to do something that uses time, for example a timer or a clock. Coroutines in Unity are able to wait for some time or for an event to occur, so they are very useful in games. Let's see how to create a coroutine that spawns a game object every second. So I just created a new c -sharp script called coroutine example. I'm going to put this script on my main camera in my scene. Now we're going to declare some variables in this script, such as the variable that holds the game object. Okay, so now let's declare our coroutine. A new coroutine in Unity can be declared using the I enumerator type for a function. Then I, I can call it uh, spawn coroutine, for example. And here we're going to put the code that spawns the object. So, you know that use the instantiate to spawn an object. So we're going to use the instantiate here. And we're going to spawn the game object where the object of the script is. So on transform.position and on quaternion.identity. Then we are going to wait for a second and then do that again. So in order to wait, you have to use the yield instruction in Unity. So yield return new wait for seconds 1.0f. This means wait for a second and then go on. And so now we can just put this in an endless loop in order to do that infinitely. So I'm going to do a while through and here we go. So this function will spawn a new game object in the position that we find here every second. Let's see if this works. At the start, I'm going to call the coroutine in order to let it work. Coroutines must be called with a specific function which is called start coroutine. So I'm going to call start coroutine with my spawn coroutine as a parameter. In this way, the coroutine will start and will go on by its own. So let's save the script, go back to Unity. We're going to create a new 3D object, such as a cube, that I save as a prefab. After putting a rigid body on it so we can see it falling. So this is my prefab. I'm going to delete it from the scene. And then I'll assign it to the main camera in the object to spawn variable. So let's see if this works. I'm going to press play. Okay, I can see something falling here. Maybe we should just uh, put another game object, uh, another position where the cube will spawn, such as, let's see, game object, create empty. And we'll use this object to spawn the cube. Okay, let's put it far away from the camera so we can see. Okay, so the, object, the, the cube will spawn here. So let's tell the script to do this thing. So public transform spawn point. We're going to use the spawn point transform position to spawn the cube. Of course, we have to assign the spawn point to the script. Yep. Okay. And here we go. Every second, a new cube will spawn in an endless loop. If I close my maximize, you can see that the new cube is added every second. This is due to the coroutine, which is actually looping infinitely and waits for a second every time the loop ends and then it starts again. Of course, we could change this. We can wait for 10 seconds, 5 seconds. We can also have a public float wait time which defaults to 0 0.5 okay. and put this here so we can change the spawn rate at runtime so here it is this is faster <laughs> and this is lower we can also use a range here to say 0 and as a maximum so we have a slide bar here 
So this is low, every three seconds. And this is very fast. <laughs> okay. So, uh, basically, this is how coroutines work. You have to declare them as an I enumerator, put a yield statement uh, in the coroutine, so the coroutine can wait for something for seconds or for an event to occur, and then proceed with the execution of the code inside of it. And then you have to call the coroutine with the start coroutine function. If you don't use a start coroutine function, the coroutine won't work. Okay, so this is very, very, very important. You, of course, can, can also give parameters to the coroutine, and you can also stop coroutine in this way. You just need a coroutine variable, for example, coroutine, which you put at null at the beginning, and then you do something like this. Current coroutine equals to start coroutine spawn coroutine. In this way, at any moment in your code, you can use a stop coroutine current coroutine, and this will stop the coroutine execution, no matter what's in the in the coroutine. So this is very useful if you want to stop a coroutine if something occurs. So let's see how to effectively use it. We can have another coroutine, for example, which can call enumerator stop after, and this simply yields return new. wait for a second and let's say to stop the other coroutine after three seconds okay so debug.log stop being the other routine and here we go and here I just call the stop after maybe we can use a parameter float time to wait and use it here so we can see how a parameter can be passed to a coroutine okay so what will happen now the spawn coroutine will be started at the beginning of the start function and will be saved in the current coroutine therefore we'll wait for three seconds in the stop after coroutine which will be called after the spawn coroutine this stop after will wait for a specific amount of time that we are passing as a parameter and then it will stop the current coroutine which is still running in an endless loop so in order to see this um, I think that I put a debug.log here so here we go let's see if this works I put a short wait time so we can see many cubes spawning like 0 0.8 so they are spawning here we go and then it stops stopping the other routine and you can see that nothing is being spawned anymore so this is how coroutines work i hope you enjoyed them and i hope you'll find them useful for your games you can use them for timers you can use them for clocks uh for timed events for anything that includes time and they are the cleanest way to do things like uh you know cooldowns and things that need for, that need time to work i hope you enjoyed the video and bye from rico the Fabs. see you soon